This is the DS3 E10 and today I'm going to range test it. So this car is based on the same drivetrain as the E28 and the Corsa E. So it has a 50 kilowatt hour battery pack, 136 horsepower motor in the front. And today we will see how far it goes. It is bigger than the, the E28. And I get the feeling it's also thirstier. So today is kind of windy. Yeah, you can, well, you don't see it, you don't hear, but just look here. My hair is kind of, okay, here, 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 you see how windy it is just to give you an indication. So, wow, it's white. Uh, I think this is pearl white. Go closer here. Yes, okay, this is pearl white. Um, and this is called the DS Performance line. Now I have to point out that it has big wheels, man. 215, 55, 18. First I thought, wait, maybe there are some uh, 17 inch. Well, actually there are some 17. They are 215, 60, <laughs> 17. And so these are actually the big wheels, more rubber. And uh, I will show you once we start driving that this car has actually way better soundproofing than the E208. Um, so I will have a separate video where I cover the interior, but I can give you guys a little uh, intro here. So look, door handle that pops out, yeah. So let me see, if I lock the car, well actually no, I can't do it right now, uh, the car is running. The, the engine is running, yes. But look here, they just went bananas, DS. Uh, they put diamonds everywhere. Everything here is diamond shaped. See, the air vents, uh, all the buttons here are diamond shaped. There's also a little diamond here. So yes, shine bright like a diamond, right? <laughs> but you will notice that, you see, uh, parts of the infotainment here, the system is very similar to uh, the E28. Also infotainment system here, very similar. Uh, also the gear lever. So you, if you know how to drive the E28, you can figure out how to drive this one. Yes, yeah, so it feels about the same. But then as for suspension, this thing here, is like uh, a boat in comparison to the 208. So um, as usual, we will drive north to Hamar, right before Hamar, turn around, point. Ooh, what is this? What is this? Is this Baustelle? Uh, okay, but oh, what happened now? What? What? Eh? Huh? Okay, let's nav. This is nav. Okay, I don't know what the heck happened there. Uh, I think I accidentally bumped into some stuff, but okay. So we will charge close to 100%. I'm not sure. Um, well, you can check by the way. Let's check the battery status. So we are charging now. Whoa, this is actually better than the E28 for some reason. Uh, well, it's 11 kilowatt now, but I might stop it once we reach, once it goes too slow. Yeah, if we can go 100%, then we go 100%. Okay, uh, we've been stuck at 97% now for about half an hour. <laughs> so you know what, I'm not gonna wait. I was, I wanted to wait for 98%, but uh, let's just leave at 97, then we calculate. Uh, yeah, I think it will be close enough anyway. So off we go then. We are finally on the move now. And the first thing you'll notice is that we have a head-up display, you know, Kona style head-up display where there is a glass that comes up and reflects on that one. So it's like the poor man's head of display. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then there is no 3D uh, thing over here like the E28. But this car is thirsty. We are gone downhill and we have tailwind and it's still consuming 168, 167 now. So I figured that I had to cruise at 92 kilometers per hour to match 90 kilometers per hour. But hey there, hold your horses. Uh, I will test 120 kilometers per hour. It's just that for practical reasons, it's better to do that low speed test first, but all right, stop asking. I will test 120 kilometers per stunden. Yes, just wait until the end of the video. All right, but now we're gonna weigh the car. Yeah, I need to know how heavy this beast is. Oh, 940, what? Wait, 920. Okay, the whole car. Whoop. 
1660, 60 kilo more than uh, E28 then. All right. Oh yeah, uh, nice weather. Actually, this will be the last day we have nice weather. Uh, for the rest of the week, we'll have lots of rain. So that's why I pushed forward to uh, test the range today. So uh, it's quite windy on Mjösen today. Uh, we have, well, okay, that windsock is broken. But we have uh, some uh, significant tailwind. Uh, and then on the way back, we get headwind. So this is niche good for this car. Seems to have poor aerodynamics. Uh, okay, there we go. So you see the windsock over there. So we have tailwind right now. Yeah. All right, let's drive all the way to the turnaround point then. We are on fairly fresh asphalt now uh, near the uh, Stong. And this car is quiet. Oh, yeah. So it has very, very little wind noise, um, but also good soundproofing against the road noise. So I need to test it uh, in my on my regular stretch. You know, this also has the 18 inch wheels. Hmm. Wonder if it has 17 inch with its 60 profile. <laughs> How quiet it'll be. But yeah, uh, way more pleasant to drive, at least noise wise. Okay. By the way, uh, we have now yeah, 21 degrees Celsius outside. Um, it's 150 consumption right now. So. All right, all right, let's see them, let's see. I'm getting close to the turnaround point now. We are back at the starting point, is Ayunti Dal, and uh, we have done 133 kilometers. Consumption is 159, wow. Okay, higher than, uh, well, slightly higher than with, uh, with the E28. But on the other hand, we have better driving condition today, so I bet if E28 draw today it'll be down to 150 it was 156 if i remember correctly so uh okay i guess we drive a little bit more before we end but you know i realized that we don't have to drive all the way to zero i guess i'll drive it low ish uh whereas i actually don't have time i have to test i have to test xpeng also today <laughs> yes um but okay uh, let's drive a little bit more okay we're back at ionti so uh, we came here with 10% and we left with 97%. So we spent 87%. And then if you look at the screenshot, uh, we have driven 248 kilometers with an average consumption of 158. So it means that we have a uh, 45 kilowatt hour, just like I measured in the previous car, the E28, 45 kilowatt hour available energy. So that's good to know. And then we can drive 285 kilometers in a single charge on this one. So it's it's close to the E208, but then it was colder weather on the E208 test. So yeah, I believe the E208 could do 300 today. But okay, now we're juicing up and then we'll go for the high speed run, the 120 kilometers per hour, the more realistic run for most people, right? Okay, yes. We are now on a high speed run, yes, well, high high speed yes and the germans here <laughs> so we're doing 120 kilometers per hour gps speed yes and the consumption is high 242 watt hour per kilometer now but you know this is a you know this this has a consumption similar to an e-tron yes and it's also big big and bulky well not that long but it's similar to e-tron so you know i think i found the French version of the e-tron, yes. The French e-tron, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I think that means something else. Uh... We're back at the starting point. So this is how I test it. I start from here, I go to a point B, and then I come back to point A to uh, compensate for elevation change and any wind advantage. Yes, I always do that, cruise 120. So, uh, 235 consumption, yes, that's actually slightly better than the E208. So I keep comparing with E208 because they're more or less the same car, but uh, uh, E208 has had slightly higher consumption, but it was colder on the E208 test. So, I guess that's, you know, this one, in theory, this car, it, it's bigger, it's taller, uh, it has more ground clearance. It should consume more. So I wonder maybe the shape of the car 
is better for air, slightly better for aerodynamics at high speed. Yeah, but it means that we can drive well about 190 kilometers in a single charge when you do highway run. Yeah. So, I think that's it for now then. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.